free conference for the sixth international symposium on creative education to be conducted in Tampere in November 2018. I am overwhelmed to see your response to this event and I congratulate you for taking this step towards the creative education. Uh, myself, Shirin Kulkarni, Founder Director for Council for Creative Education. Today, we have the agenda that we will first listen about uh, Council for Creative Education, a small introduction. I will give it to you. Then we will have our presentations one by one. Today, we have total four presenters. Jenny uh, Beecham from Australia. Then we have Khulud from Saudi Arabia. We have Vijaya from Vishakhapatnam, India. And then we have Rin from Thailand. They are going to talk about different topics in creative education. And you will uh, hear their presentation. There will be also time given for the question answers and discussion with them. Please feel free to post your comments in the YouTube video where you can see us and listen to us. We will take it into consideration as the time permits. Now, I would like to give you some more introduction about Council for Creative Education. Council for Creative Education, we are based in Finland and our motto is redefining education through creativity. We are doing this work uh, with Education Finland program and we are officially recognized by the Ministry of Education of Finland. We are doing uh, many activities. We are a cooperative and research-based organization, international organization, working mainly in the field of creative pedagogy. We are, we believe that the excellent kind of education uh, environment can be given with the help of creative pedagogy. You can see the list of our partners that we have there, university, governments, schools, companies. Then we are having our network and collaboration in many countries. We also have our offices in uh, different countries. We are growing regularly from 2013 up to now 2018. You can see it in this graph. We, uh, our journey started long back in 2007 with uh, my research with the Professor Eroropo about creativity and school environment, a comparative study between India and Finland. We have signed MOUs with universities. We are connected to uh, more than 135 schools, colleges. We have trained faculties from pre-primary till higher education. We have conducted many workshops, symposiums and seminars, which are attended by more than 14,000 teachers from 400 plus institutes. We are also opening our own schools uh, with the creative pedagogy. We have our uh, local presence in countries like Australia, USA, Indonesia, India, Vietnam, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Nigeria. Our goal is to provide an open, student-friendly, creative, and quality school environment to the students, which will lead them to holistic personality development and successful life. So why we need the creative pedagogy is because we are going into, we are into 21st century and now we need more thinkers because we have the information available at the fingertips, but we don't know what to do with this so much of information. So we need the thinkers who can apply this information in a constructive way and they can think for themselves and create the employment for themselves. 
CCE is mainly working into four fields. First is training and workshops. Another is consultancy. Then we also conduct the conferences and our school camps, creative ideator camps, and we are into research and innovations. Now, when we talk about training, we have various kinds of programs for teacher training where we believe that fun is the key to learn. So you can see that our uh, things are very interactive. We uh, have also announced Diploma in Creative Pedagogy and Classroom Management. You can read more about this program from our website. We have another program announced Diploma in Early Childhood Education, which is also an online diploma. And you can also read more about it from our website. And it is beginning from September 3rd. Those of you who are interested in joining it can get more information from website and also can write to us. We have been organizing the training for international educators about Finland education. So we have mainly four programs in that which comprise of early childhood education, pedagogical leadership, education technology, and comprehensive education too. Up till now, our program has been attended by more than 1,000 teachers and trainers across the globe. We are uh, conducting the workshops uh, in many countries for the trainers, for the teachers, for the students, uh, mainly in the higher education. And we have got amazing response till now. We also have our online teacher in-service training programs. So you can see uh, that we have something in narrative teaching, uh, ICT trainings, and teaching versus learning. We also have a separate program for the leadership, uh, which comprises of different trainings. We have specially designed programs for ICT trainings, uh, where uh, we try to help the teachers to understand the new techniques and technology when while working with the students. We have our different trainings in creative pedagogy where the teachers get ideas about uh, the new technologies which are getting developed, new pedagogies which are getting developed, and we try to equip them with this. CCE is known for its consultancy uh, and we have given the consultancy to various governments, state governments, as well as uh, the central governments in various countries. We have been working with uh, universities from USA, from Japan and from Nigeria. Our signature program has been our series of for international symposium on creative education. Up till now, we have conducted five symposiums, international symposiums on creative education with various themes. We have got uh, amazing response from the international educators. Other programs has been attended by more than 30 countries already and we are sure that every year we are getting more and more response and we are sure that those of who you are watching this they are also interested in joining us this year so let us have a look at what happened for last five years with us so last year, uh, we had our fifth international symposium on creative education. The theme was together we create. There was a special reason to have this kind of theme because we were part of Suomi Sata or Finland 100 project. Finland was celebrating its centenary of independence. So CCE joined hands uh, to celebrate the creativity in Finnish schools. So as a part of this symposium, we also had an exhibition uh, for 100 creative experiments from Finland and also 
another set of experiments uh, from the globe. We are also going to continue the same kind of project this year as well. You can read about the themes of papers which we had last year from the slide. Uh, previous to that, in year 2016, we had our fourth international symposium where our theme was engaging minds in creative ways. There also we had uh, mainly focused about how to engage the children, how to engage the youth also in positive ways in learning and how they can do various things when they are engaged in learning. For this, we had our keynote speaker, Gaudi Keller, who will be also coming again in 2016 as a keynote speaker. And he will talk about the imagination, the role of imagination in creative education. We, have our, we had our third international symposium in year 2015, where our theme was creative school. The speciality of this symposium was that we arranged the symposium basically in a creative school. So we got very good response for that. And uh, we had Professor Aero Ropo to talk about narrative pers perspective on curriculum in that symposium. And it was attended uh, by again 20 plus countries educators and they really thoroughly enjoyed the school visits and the paper presentations by different researchers. We had our second international symposium uh, in University of Tampere in October 2014, where our theme was uh, creativity in teaching and learning. And we had uh, people from 18 countries and uh, also uh, there were very interesting topics shared by them. It all started in, in India first uh, with the international first international symposium there. We had a series of seminars and workshops along with it. So I guess now you have a very good picture of what we do in our symposiums, how we organize it, and you will get to listen more about it today from our speakers. And they will they will share their experiences with you. They will share their experiences with you and you will be able to ask your questions to them. You will be able to hear on different topics from them. And I guess it will be a very interactive and very good session for all of us. And we can learn a lot from each other. You are welcome. I will again suggest that you are welcome to post your comments in the YouTube video where you are able to follow us and uh, now i would like to ask my colleague elena shuklan seva to take this symposium uh, this pre conference further from this point so elena please welcome uh, on my part hello everyone from around the world i would like to Welcome you all and hope you enjoy this event today with us. Uh, just before we proceed with the presentations, a few words about myself. I'm a part of the CC team here in Finland and uh, my background is in education, in international and comparative education. And uh, my particular focus is uh, on early childhood education and care. Uh, I do some research on educational theories and uh, practices. And uh, I also uh, do some uh, inquiries into the uh, field of uh, special 
education with the uh, with the discovering the support system for learning difficulties and behavioral issues and uh, at this point i will mention that uh, we have four presentations today and the first presenter is uh, jenny from australia jenny is a primary school teacher and uh, she is doing her research uh, in the field of creative pedagogies so i think that we are going to hear more today so i would like to give the floor to jenny jenny thank you uh, hello everyone um i'm speaking to you from sydney and um, I'm a primary school teacher here. I teach year one this year, which is uh, six to seven year olds. Um, and I'm also, uh, as Elena said, I'm doing my PhD and my focus is on creative pedagogies. Um, so today I just want to present to you um, some ideas I have about the potential for deeper learning through creative collaboration. So I'll just wait for my presentation to come up. Jenny, please go ahead because we can see the presentation. Great. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. So, um, this on the second slide, I would just like to um, talk about the creative collaboration potential from three perspectives. So, for me, I'm a teacher of young children. Um, I'm also a researcher of education, and I'm a learner. Um, thirdly. And from the learner's perspective, I'd like to talk about um, myself as a learner, but also our, our students as learners and what they might need um, for all different learner types and ways that we can address that through creative collaboration. Um, next slide, please. Sorry, I can't see, but I'll just say next slide. Um, so as a teacher, um, I think it's important to really focus on facilitating quality experiences. And the ideal way to do that is to create opportunities for um, students to collaborate with different people. So of course we think of um, creating ways that they can collaborate with their peers in class, but it's important to also reach beyond that and connect them to students of the same age in another classroom, um, older and younger children within the same school, um, special guests that you might bring in, um, these can maybe be parents um, of the kids or um, community members. Um, and the second point is to allow space for learning, uh, the learning experience to take its own shape. So of course we go into any experience, we invest a lot into it, we have a vision of what it will be. And I think it's important that we stick to that, but we also must be flexible and prepared for change and able to react um, in the right ways to whatever might pop up. Um, we should also focus, as many of us um, have already spoken about, even at the CCE conferences, on um, student interest and project-based work. So it's very important, and um, although unfortunately I didn't attend the, um, the CCE conference on um, engaging learners, I imagine that there was quite a bit about the project-based and student interest um, projects to really draw students in and get them interested. Um, so for me in Australia, things like pap paper airplanes, you know, little kids love building paper airplanes and um, you can connect every possible um, curriculum area to the simple creation of paper airplanes. Um, we've also done things about Minecraft um, and student interests such as sport, which I understand in Finland also many kids enjoy um, sporting after school and on the weekends. 
Um, and part of that is having a capability and the ability to um, constantly formatively assess. So not just waiting to the end to look back and say, did that work or did that not work? But as each moment is passing and each little part of the project thinking, um, is this working and how can I change what we're doing um, to, to fit, to better reach the outcome? So I think that, you know, finally, it's important that the kids get to share what they've done. So lots of us might put so artwork on the walls, which is excellent because then the kids can see what they've done in their everyday space, but also maybe something special um, like a, you know, some sort of a, a gallery that you might set up in the school or inviting the parents in for a special day to show off what they've done. So an example that I have for you, if you could go to the next slide, is something I'm actually in the middle of working on right now. So um, my year one class has made contact with an Australian artist who's very famous in Sydney and more, you know, pretty well known in Australia. Um, and his name's Joel, but he, go, he goes by the name of Mulga. And um, this is an image of some of his murals that he does. He does really bright, um, childlike um, animals and sunnies, uh, sunglasses on them and bright plants. And um, so basically my students, I got them to brainstorm all about plants and animals in our local environment, which connected to our geography and science um, outcomes. And then we collaborated with um, Joel, um, and he actually started his career at the markets that we have at our school every Saturday. So that's where he began a few years ago. Um, so that's a good connection to history. Um, we met with him via Skype. So um, I know that in Finland there's a lot of technology, and um, the kids are very well versed in technology, but um, that was kind of unusual for kids um, at least in the city in Sydney, to be Skyping with someone for a meeting. So they found that very exciting. Um, and they had to figure out how to, pay, how to pay for it. They had to come up with ways of raising money. And that was funny, let me tell you, some of the ideas they had about where money comes from. Um, and now, actually, on Monday, um, the, the artist has created a mural based on all of the shared ideas. And he'll be painting that mural on the outside of our building um, a really big mural that reflects all of our ideas combined. Um, and it's going to be featured in a special event and in the newspaper um, to really connect back to the local community and to show it off to family and friends and other members of the school. So if we could just move to the next slide. Um, as a researcher, um, I, I think it's important to focus on connections and new discoveries. So network as much as possible. That was the first piece of advice that I was given. And I know many, many of you probably do that, but as an, I'm, I'm an introvert and I found that really, I'm, I more enjoy the researching and the writing and less more of the talking. But what I've found is, um, it is actually crucial and, it, and it's really been great. And that's one of the things that I've loved about CCE and presenting last November, working with Sharon and Haram, um, is really getting to know people from around the globe and sharing ideas with them in a really friendly and open way. So I think that's the number one thing to keep in mind for creative collaboration. Um, also seek to evolve your teaching practice. So um, don't, get comfortable, don't get too comfortable, I suppose. Always try and, and be better and learn more about what's going on and don't be afraid to take risks. Um, and stay focused on your goal. So one of the things I learned my last trip in Finland was that, um, you know, the principal at one of the schools I visited said, you know, we, we always go back to our main goal, which is the student experience and um, what, benefit does anything have for the students and they never lose sight of that and I thought that was really fabulous because that's one of the things that we might not do so well here in Australia uh, with standardized testing and um, you know some different priorities that slip into the school systems here um, so that's something that I've learned from Finland that I, I hold as being really important and of course the arts and education which is my passion and um, the forming of a global community, as I mentioned through CCE.
So as an example, if we could go to the next slide. Um, so this is something that I initially heard about in Finland, which many of you will, might know about. Um, so a week on a farm. So the kids that I spent some time with told me so much about this experience. It meant so much to them. Um, and I think at the end they said it, they said the main thing that they got from it was that it was real life. It meant something to them. Um, they got to work together and collaborate with each other um, about how to overcome challenges like, you know, feeding animals that they've never seen before or washing the dishes or making food for everyone. Um, and learning through doing is a way that they um, were able to experience real authentic learning. They, through their collaboration, were able to link to why things are important, such as environmentalism. And they learned outdoors with others through creative collaboration, which was a holistic way of learning. So I like the fact that children were able to develop a respect for the process of where things come from. So money doesn't come from trees and um, food doesn't just appear in a packet at the supermarket. You know, there's a process behind it. And um, it really, so I felt like, taught them respect for the process of working with others and considering other viewpoints. So I think that's really important, an important link to creativity um, and also capability, confidence, innovation. Um, and I'll just go to the next slide, please. Um, from the third perspective I wanted to talk about is from the learner's perspective. So ways of developing, I think, you know, collaborating is a skill, as I mentioned before, as an introvert. Um, it is something that, that you have to practice at, I would say, like public speaking or, or anything else. So the more opportunities as educators that we can give our children to practice collaborating, um, the greater the benefits will be as they get older, move into high school uh, and become adults um, who hopefully connect with the, with the outside world in a positive way. Um, some of the you know, downfalls of, of different education systems are that sometimes um, knowledge or skills are in isolation. So it's about the testing of certain skills without any greater context. Um, and obviously projects should encourage imagination, especially in young children. And so without a context, without collaborating with others, I think um, that children's imagination is not engaged as effectively as it should be. So anything that creates, so I've listed here, creating, making, viewing, appreciating, discussing, problem solving, and risk taking. All these sorts of challenges um, that help develop the whole child are really ideal. So as an example, on the next slide, I've just um, pointed out one example that I know, which is Reader's Theatre. And um, Reader's Theatre is amazing, and I've seen it firsthand working with um, the needs of every child. So at the moment, I've got a year one class with a, a really, really diverse range of uh, learning types and also individual needs. And this is a way that I've... I've used this before, but I've seen it really um, work well here in that students can kind of take ownership of what they want their role to be. So if they're comfortable performing, they're an extrovert, they can choose to be a performer. We also have costume designers, um, set and prop makers, um, people who want to adjust the lighting or have some ideas about special effects. Lots of the boys love to do special effects. and. Um, Sort of these roles can rotate. So every time we do a different performance, the kids change um, what their role is. Um, I keep the script simple for year one. Um, and readers' theatre, which you may or may not know, you actually hold the script in front of you. So those readers who are less confident, or the introverts, actually feel really confident when they can hold their paper in front of them and read their lines. Um, so that kind of draws out the quieter kids. Um, and seeing all the kids work together to then do this final performance is really amazing. Um, but I often take them ne next door to the class next door to perform. It's really simple. Um, but sometimes we videotape it. Sometimes we have an assembly and we'll do these performances for family and friends. And um, 
it really does prioritize the imagination, creativity, and collaboration through literature and the creative arts. Um, and then just on my last slide, hopefully I'm not rushing too much. Um, just on my last slide, so I just wanted to put some sort of quotes up there that I like to remind myself of um, that we have sort of posted around our space, which is, you know, creativity and imagination and collaboration. Um, they're really all crucial because if what you want is to provide your students with the ideal uh, learning environment and learning experience, um, these things are crucial and um, that it provides a deeper, uh, valuable and truly useful experience for them that will serve them not only at the moment, um, you know, at the time, learning new skills, but into the future. So for the rest of their education and also as they get older and become adults out in society. So I just want to, to conclude with that thought and just also thank um, Say a thank you to CCE, to Haram, and to Sharon for having me here to present today. And um, yes, I'll hand it back over to you, Elena. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we will have a next presenter, and uh, after that, we will have a small summarizing session with the questions and comments and ideas. So, uh, I have a pleasure to uh, introduce Kulud. Kulud comes from uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, she is a principal of a Greenleafs preschool, and uh, she has uh, expertise in early childhood education, and at the moment, she is doing her research in educational leadership. So, Khalud, please feel welcome. Uh, Khulud, you, you need to unmute your microphone, please, to start with. Uh, Kulut, can you please unmute your microphone? You can you, you can go to the top and just okay. unmute the microphone. Now you can start again. Thank you. Um, I'm honored to be selected as a speaker with CCE and talk about this controversial topic. And uh, uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kulud Al Fadli. I come from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm doing my master's degree in leadership, educational leadership, and my thesis uh, research is about uh, a competitive study between uh, uh, Finland and Saudi Arabia and, uh, uh, and a competitive study of play and instruction among selected schools in Finland and Saudi Arabia. And I'm an associate trainer from Center of Teaching Effectiveness in Classroom Management. Uh, uh, I'm a representative there and uh, also a, a representative in CCE in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was always my dream to visit Finland uh, when I came to it, it came out uh, and I got to know CCE. Uh, then I led a group of eight people and I visited Finland. It was one of my dreams to visit Finland and interact with teachers and Finnish teachers, observe classrooms, and it was a really added a wonderful value in, in my career. Um, can I go to my uh, slide now? Okay. First slide is teachers' aim and goals. Um, okay, we all uh, all teachers have aims and goals. All teachers would like to have students uh, to love learning, to be lifelong learners, to think out of the box, uh, ask open-ended uh, questions, and be critical thinkers. Uh, every teacher would aim 
contrary to that strong personality also. Uh, this is one of the things that a teacher should stress on uh, also to build their personality and being independent. Uh, also, one of the crucial things is enjoy learning, and I stress in this because when a student, uh, when students are learning through fun and activity, they will be eager to come the next day and less challenge the teacher. Uh, we all know sometimes educational could be uh, a painful process, so it's the teacher's role how to to do it in, a, in an easy way and to have fun uh, among this. Uh, teachers all would like to build the cognitive development of a child. Uh, this also should be one of her priority uh, goals and aims. Uh, teachers' roles is very crucial. They are not only here to deliver uh, an information. They are here to, to let the children love learning uh, by, by their imagination. Uh, they're not supposed to spoon-fed students with knowledge they should they should let students ask questions and be curious to know more about the subject uh, they need to relate ideas and knowledge of experiences from what they take uh, to question what's happening around the world teachers will be using uh, different tactics uh, in order for a child to excel i believe if a child was not engaged in the learning process, that means he's not learning or he's not enjoying uh, in learning. So, as I said, teachers' aims and goals is, is a really a crucial point. You can let the child excel, love, or hate in the school. So, the key is with the teacher. Now, one of the very important points, the components, is uh, imagination and education. And we go to the next slide. Okay. First of all, what is imagination? Uh, imagination is a skill that should be taught in school, uh, and it's the ability of the mind to have the power of thinking big ideas. Uh, in general, school gives teachers the subjects, the topics, what they do not teach them how to teach. How to teach, it's, it's up to the teacher. Uh, she should be uh, creative to deliver a lesson. So uh, imagination is a learning tool where teachers should use in classroom to enrich the capacity of students uh, to love learning. Uh, she have to have students in engaging what if questions. Um, a quote, as Lee Crockett once said, um, uh, imagination is the synthesis of the knowledge. It's a vehicle that takes the learner from point A to point B on its own, on their own, uh, where children need to ask questions and think critically connecting what they learn to what they see, then adapt it in their real life. Uh, in other words, uh, it's what it takes them from creative classrooms into real life. Once Einstein said, uh, imagination is more important than knowledge. Uh, knowledge is limited. Imagination is in circles, the world. Uh, for me, I say imagination and education. Um, uh, next slide. Uh, the importance of imagination. Uh, as I said, it's a very crucial component, imagination. Uh, and the early, especially in the early years, classroom is to boost their think, critical thinking and problem solving. Uh, now, critical thinking and problem solving, these are the phrases that we see in the child development. Uh, we use these two words to enhance uh, children to think and, and to engage in learning. Uh, unfortunately, we see uh, students lacking of imagination nowadays. We started to feel the difficult of learning and process, uh, I believe, because of the using of electronics. Uh, so 
we can't have an education without imagination. Education could be a painful process, as I said, for some students. So a teacher role is here to help the student to excel uh, in his educational process. For instance, uh, if a teacher wants to figure out uh, a mathematical equation, she should elaborate in a creative way how to think out. Um, or for example, how to memorize uh, a multiplicational uh, She's like songs and rhythms to dance and for them to memorize. So it's important children should have also, uh, as a parent, if a kid came to you uh, and said that he's bored, it's fine to have this kid bored because being bored is, is the time where they have to think and create to do something on their own. So allow children to have free time allow to give them an unstructured uh, unscheduled time in, in, in their daily uh, routine life for them to create and think what to do they can play for example uh, with wooden spoons uh, they can create dolls with socks they can pretend to be a bird uh, so just give them their own space to have this free time and to create uh, their own world The next slide. Uh, okay, uh, before, like studies shows that imagination uh, strengths the logical uh, uh, enhancing students. Um, they will have vocabulary in their language, the ability to reflect. Um, uh, also, it will enhance their memory. Uh, reasoning, uh, uh, pro uh, puzzle solving problems, all these comes from uh, imagination and, and creative and learning. So also uh, imaginative uh, play in the role of education uh, considered important for the developmental skills of the child. Uh, now, how to nurture child's imagination and creativity? Slide number six. Uh, okay. Uh, how to nurture child's imagination and creativity? Teachers, she could use so many ways. As long as her class is equipped and she is ready, lessons plan are ready, uh, then she can engage in the um, imagination uh, tools. For example, uh, the verbal activities, verbal activities, for example, uh, like uh, rhymes and riddles of making up stories, relating stories. Uh, she can use the game of I spy with my little eye, uh, can help in the learning, stimulating the mind. Uh, memorizing multiplication, as I said, with songs and, and movements class. Uh, also, one of the important uh, tools is limit electronics. Uh, unfortunately, kids these days, as I said, they are addicted to electronics. So we should, as a parent and as educator, limit the time of using electronics. Uh, iPads, uh, table pads, all kinds of video games. Um, uh, we should minimize the use uh, of that and spend watching or playing, um, connecting to the nature more or thinking what to do. Uh, try as a parent also engage in, in the role. For example, if they started to create something, they could be engaging with them uh, in their superheroes world or whatever the kid can think but limit uh, limit the time of using um, the electronics uh, dramatic play is also one of the crucial things um, invent stories uh, with your child bedtime stories uh, it could be a crucial point also um, 
mom and have critical thinking and the imagination of the student. Engage the student in the story. For example, after reading the story, say, how did you like the story? If you are the hero of this story, would you do the same as he did, or uh, would you do the opposite? Or just ask him questions about the story and one of the uh, heroes in the story. So engage him in the story. So dramatic play uh, is also one of the crucial points. Uh, other thing is hands-on arts and activities. Uh, this hands-on art activities also enhance in the child's uh, imagination. Uh, just give him all the uh, art materials. Uh, don't give him a structured piece of paper with a specific drawing. You know, just give him arts, brushes, and, and let him create. Let him think. I usually do this with my students and with my kids. Uh, I just give them colors, uh, canvases, and, and feel free to draw or to create whatever uh, you think you would like to. And each one will, will think out of the box and create so many um, uh, things and it will, it will come and suddenly she's like, uh, oh, it's a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur, okay, elaborate in this drawing, continue. So, so they start uh, with their imagination to to continue what they were doing. Um, ask open-ended question. This is also one of the things that's uh, very important in, in the imagination. Uh, what if questions, for example, uh, what if you were uh, in the ancient Egypt uh, air times, what career would you choose to be if you were back then? Or for example, if you're in this story, what kind of uh, superhero hero would you be? Uh, or if you, would, if you were an and So let them think with the question that you questioned them. Uh, these things will, will enhance their uh, critical thinking and they can start imagine, imagine and, and be creative in their learning. Uh, no many educators relate education with, with refer it actually to the early years. Um, I say imagination is, is not specified on a certain age. It's from zero all the way to university. As long as there is education, there should be imagination. It's not only for the early years. But we stress it more in the early years because kids, when they are kids, their imagination is this. Is, is big and open. Um, reading stories, read aloud stories, is also one of the uh, uh, points that is very crucial for the kids, especially the bedtime stories. Okay, can go to the next slide. Uh, different learning styles. Um, this this method, this tool is very crucial in, in the teach uh, the teaching program. Uh, we have, have all um, all of these uh, learning styles. A teacher and have a combination combination of the verbal, visual, musical, uh, the physical, and the logical, social, and the solitary learning styles to create a classroom that is really equipped for them to excel and, and to think out of the box. If she used one uh, style of each, she can make sure that the students uh, learn best. For instance, some only can learn uh, if they are in group, or one of the students, they only have a verbal. Verbal is, is, is a way that using the vocabulary is for them to teach. Uh, some of them are visual learners. Uh, they should see and, and learn at the same time. Um, the most fun is the physical. Uh, they, they move. Uh, they can pretend that they are in a, in a dramatic play. They can use this in a history or in the geography um, play. And uh, so each kid is unique. 
in such a way she can actually should use one of each in her classroom to make sure that all students uh, are equipped with the with the right uh, tool for them to use it in their imagination. So this is also one of the important tools. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Now boost students with ideas. As I said, ask questions, then back off. Uh, make sure that the students think out loudly. And as a teacher, she should ask questions and, and, and make sure that they start to figure out the answers. Uh, they should always know the answers on their own. Uh, teachers must be sure to have uh, students synthesis and puzzle solving. Uh, I remember um, students, when I used to be a student, uh, I could see that students are just memorizing and saying what they're memorizing without real understanding. And, and I felt I can't memorize like them, but I felt that this is a wrong tool. Unfortunately, a lot are using this tool and uh, they're, they're not using their critical thinking. So students should understand and, and understand to know the to know the um, to be great in their educational process. Uh, imagination is not taught but modeled actually by teacher. Teacher herself she should have uh, the imagination uh, and, uh, and skill to teach these students. Always, if you would like to teach a student a new tool, you should model it. Always walk the talk with the imagination, then you should be effective enough to let them imagine. Uh, so as I said, transition from knowledge gathering and memorizing to synthesis, to synthesizing and puzzle solving is one of the crucial points. Uh, imagination is not taught but but modeled as I said uh, also one of the crucial points is playing uh, students they have to play they have to have fun while they're learning um, uh, for example uh, play is, is 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 really important uh, they can like uh, Puzzle thinking, critical thinking while playing. I spy with my little eye. Uh, they have this um, uh, rhythms, uh, riddles, all these play in, in grammar uh, subject and math. It can enhance, enhance the children to play more. To learn the nation, do a better job visualizing that they are re when reading. Uh, solving problems, entertaining themselves without devices, and thinking creatively in a variety of solutions and situations. Um, imaginative sharing. Uh, choose a creative topic. For an educator, you should choose a creative topic and ask them questions. Let them engage with you in this topic. Uh, uh, as I said, like uh, if you if you are an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Uh, so these open-ended questions can can help the child to enhance in learning. Um, in the morning, for example, uh, in the early morning, uh, every morning, you can, as a teacher, ask them questions. Uh, what have you um, brought to school today? Have you brought your homework? And if he said, for example, no, try to let him not feel guilty that he didn't do his homework. Let him have uh, another option by doing something in an imagination. Uh, so the teacher has the key of each child. Um, now, after discussing these topics, I in my area and all around the world, um, I really like to, to share and to raise the awarenesses of this important topic tool um, uh, that 
imagination and education is a very important uh, tool. To, uh, and I really would like to raise this awareness and adapt it in classrooms, um, not only in the early years, because unfortunately, uh, educators start to relate it or imagination that means is the early years. Or imagination is like close your eyes and just imagine. No, it's more than that. It's it's about some subject. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening. I would handle this now to Elena. Thank you, Haluk. It was really, very nice to listen to your thoughts and uh, perspectives. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, after we've had uh, our few presentations now, we're going to have a, a session of questions. Uh, comments, ideas from the audience, but maybe uh, I could summarize the the overall uh, the overall ideas of what we have heard by now. Uh, just for myself, uh, I understood that even if your topics have even if you have two different topics, uh, Jenny has a uh, her topic on uh, uh, primary school uh, learners and creative pedagogies as applied in primary school, and Kulut has. Uh, 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 the topic on leadership and the uh, uh, importance of the teacher's role. I think that both that even if you talk about different age groups and your topics sound different, actually they have a lot of similarities. And I think it's natural because whenever we talk about education, we are talking about learning. And uh, as both of you emphasized, learning always happens in interaction and uh, learning is always uh, holistic. And uh, I think Jenny's perspective on uh, collaborating within the school and also collaborating with the various agents from outside the school is very important here. So this is how we can uh, bring the learning process further and uh, promote learning. And uh, then we could basically talk about something we call uh, here in Finland, like learning communities. I think uh, maybe a universal term. And uh, of course, uh, learning through doing and learning uh, through experiences, own experiences, own sensations, and through uh, uh, own uh, participation and involvement. This is also a very important, and this is also the point that you brought up, both of you brought up. And uh, I also would like to thank you for sharing with us a lot of uh, practical uh, tips <laughs> how to work with the children. Even though you talked about different age groups, we can still adjust the practices and apply them for younger ages or for primary school children. And uh, yeah, we have got a question now. So I will. Uh, I think this is a question for Hulud. Uh, so the question is as follows uh, How can you strategically create opportunities to increase imagination? Uh, are there probing questions that you suggest to engage students uh, to tap in the, into their imagination? So the question is about how, what are the uh, probably what uh, are can you repeat the first question, please? Strategies. What are the techniques that would probably increase or promote imagination? Thank you. What are the strategies to promote uh, the imagination? Uh, the strategies um, are in in the classroom. It's with the teachers. Uh, she should be a model about uh, being uh, creative herself. Um, for example, if the child is suffering from a math mathematical equation, uh, she could elaborate more, uh, use like um, examples to, to elaborate this. Um, in her class, classrooms also always should be equipped material for the child can enhance and, and use his imaginative, imaginative uh, thinking. Uh, for example, 
in the classroom, it should be cornered, um, a science corner with, with different uh, materials for the kid that can, for example, use them and, and to create something. Uh, using another corner, a blocks corner, what, what with the block can you do? You can do a building, you can just have honor with, for example, uh, newspapers, art. Uh, materials are and let them create something out of this uh, materials so all these strategies help students uh, uh, something from it with this teacher but the teacher as I said uh, her strategies should she she should equip her classroom with the right materials and know how to use them and to ask questions what are you doing for example, with a newspaper, uh, what are you doing with the blocks? Uh, I can see you're doing a tall building, or I can see that you're doing uh, a bridge, or it's, 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 it's the questions and doing and, and the materials. What are What is the second question? Uh, hold on. Uh, are there uh, are there probing questions you suggest to engage students uh, to tap into their imagination? What kind of questions I should ask to students? Yeah, but I think that partly you have covered this. Yeah, or but if you want to add, please feel welcome. Yes, the what if questions. Yeah. Uh, what if you are a bird, for example? Would you live in that tree? Uh, what if uh, we went back uh, to the uh, uh, ancient Egypt? What kind of career would you choose? So these questions let the kid would think and, 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 and pretend that he's in that uh, situation. So he could answer when he has this question and, and start, start to thinking in it. So the what if questions is this is a very important crucial with along with the play and pretend to be the imaginative play the dramatic play is also one of the uh, the important things a teacher for example can engage herself if she saw a kid playing or uh, if you are a hero what kind of hero would you like to be so open-ended questions and what if questions are, are are one of the questions that should be used in a classroom from an educator or even a parent could use it uh, to her uh, to her children. Thank you, Kulud. Welcome. Uh, I, I think you shared with us very good practical tips, hints. Thank you. Uh, we have. Uh, Another question here for both Jenny and Hulud. Uh, how do we strategize for larger classrooms? So if we have, if we are talking about the larger number of children in the class. Sorry, could you just repeat the question again? How do we strategize for a larger class? So what kind of strategies we use when we work with a larger group of children? I see. I see, okay. Um, look, I'll, I'll address that if that's okay. Um, I think that if it's possible to have half the class, split half the class and have one group as the audience, and maybe they have a task for um, what we call two stars and a wish or a feedback sandwich where they're appreciating and so they're observing, they're noticing details um and they're linking it to things they already know so for example um something that we've done in the past is if if they look at something they can think um that reminds me of of this um something i liked about your performance was you know i liked this line that you said um i wish maybe um there could have been more of this character and overall, I think it was great. So it's it's teaching kids to observe and communicate their observations in a respectful way, but also uh, when it's their turn, if you then swap the class, 
so that the audience become the performers and the other way around. Um, they take what they observed and had to feedback, you know, they take it on board. Um, so I, I suppose just in the, in, the t in the theme of collaboration, it's a good way of practicing those skills of learning how to communicate and think about things um, a bit deep, more deeply. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, maybe Hulud, you could add something to this. So what would be your strategy if you are working in a bigger uh, class? Um, a lot of points um, the kid could could excel in and, and feel that he is, he is proud of himself. Uh, for example, uh, show and tell. He could choose any story or any toy that he likes and present it to his uh, student, to his classmates, and talk about it, elaborate about it, use vocabularies to learn. Um, so he can also include the imagination and this show and tell activity. Uh, if uh, it is very important, if uh, a child did something good the teacher uh, let him have this uh, you feel good end of story it's not good to reward him every time he did something good so this can build his uh, confidence more and, and to have appreciation in himself if I did something good I will feel good that's it end of story uh, it's, it's good also to relate and link back to the previous um, uh, subjects that they took. For example, if they took a new lesson, uh, let the teacher remind them of a previous lesson. Um, uh, uh, start of the week, also one of the strate strategies, uh, how, to, how to have the child um, feel confident about herself. If he did something good, that is going to be the start of the week. For example, once every year, each child choose a week to to shine in. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Uh, we have another question for Jenny. Uh, how how can uh, readers theater can be used in medical fields? If you have any ideas or suggestions. Yeah. In medical fields. So um, hmm, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the question means in terms of in medical fields, but if it means in terms of children learning about, um, well, I, I don't know, I suppose I would need more clarification. Does it mean performing for um, children uh, to teach them about health? Um, I mean, I think the, the good thing about Reader's Theatre is that it and I, maybe I didn't uh, clarify this enough in my presentation, but any literature or piece of information um, can be turned into a reader's theatre script. So it's just a very simple script about anything really. So if it is about the medical, um, anything to do with medical, whether it's teaching children about medicines or health or performing for people who are unwell or children who are unwell, um, you can tailor just about any story to be appropriate and the right length of time for the audience or the purpose. So I don't know if that answers the question, but hopefully that uh, kind of addresses it. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, Jenny, actually just, just I will tell you the background behind this question, which is because this question is okay. asked from one of the teacher uh, who herself is from the medical background and she is quite a creative teacher who takes the boring subjects like uh, pharmacology. Pharmacology is a quite a boring subject. And yes. she creates the different stories and uh, make the students interesting in the subject. So she's always looking for new methods to work on. So I guess okay. you answered, you answered yes. your uh, part. It's really great. Yes. Uh, yeah. but, but in future, if you find any of the ideas which can correlate, so I guess it's good to connect with Dr. Zoshi from uh, Gujarat okay. in the west, west part of India. And okay. she, she is quite working uh, heavily at the higher education in the medical field 
how to bring the creativity to the subjects that's why the subject uh, questions has been there can i add one more thing now yes, that knowing quickly, quickly i'll just say that um one of the things we work on are fairy tales so the traditional fairy tales but we do something called fractured fairy tales which maybe also do there so the say for example the three little pigs are, it's told from the wolf's point of view the wolf is the hero and he's he's telling the story so um maybe playing with perspective maybe taking a traditional um fairy tale something simple that children can relate to and either applying uh, the qualities of the illness or or whatever would work for your setting and um maybe just flipping it around to make it more creative and more interesting for them that might be one idea that i can think of uh, elena uh, can i request you one thing thanks thanks it was perfect elena do you do, do we have time for one question yeah one more question okay uh, i request uh, uh, the president of the the, the sharada to go back to the slide number 6 and jenny this is regarding your slide where in which uh, you were mentioning about this mulga the artist where the, yeah. uh, stu the the student started collaborating with a common project uh, yes. and i guess it's my typical question every time that when you started this uh, what were the issues you faced for motivating the students so that everybody should collaborate and engage in the part that's the what okay. were your ideas or strategies for that Okay so um I mean obviously my my kids this year are 6 years old so I said oh I've made contact with Mulga the artist and and they they just looked at me like and why do we care you know who is this so I suppose it's finding a common ground um you know children it's good to engage with them and then you sort of ripple out to the greater world as they get you know more and more you know interested but um I suppose that that the ideal thing was that Molga the artist um started at the very spot where our classroom sits in the playground. So we were looking at geography and location and um and physically I could say in in this very spot just outside the door you know where the markets are is where he has started and we were able to access his images online and look at his artworks and talk about his art. um which is one of the things that I've done research on is art appreciation for very young kids so that was kind of a, a a passion of mine and something I had experience and so we we looked at his art and we we talked about it and got interested in it and then when we were able to do the Skype call and see his face and talk with him they had all these questions to ask him and and they then made a personal connection with him which has made the project I suppose um successful i think in lots of ways super thank you thank you elena back to you uh thank you jenny for your insightful comments very interesting thank you, thank you. Uh, before we carry on with our presentations i would like just to say that we have the uh, audience from 14 countries following us uh from new zealand japan thailand indonesia india nigeria saudi arabia bahrain finland Singapore so please feel welcome all and we continue with our presentations and the next presentation is uh, by uh, Vijaya from India uh, Vijaya is a teacher with uh, over 20 years of experience and uh, for about last 8 years Vijaya has been very passionate about uh, pedagogy and i think we are going to uh hear more about the concept and what it is in practice thank you welcome to the namaste everyone This is Vijay Bhavan Kote from Vishakhapatnam, India, Andhra Pradesh. I have been practicing on uh, hydrogogy for the period of uh, I mean past eight years, and it was a success. So when a success model, uh, you adopt a success model, and uh, you have uh, great students coming up, it's it's something like uh, you know you are more and more passionate towards the 
um, method that you are using. And then what uh, I have been experiencing in my uh, career as a teacher for the past 20 years and the period of eight years that have been, uh, you know, uh, I have been taking up various experiments on heterogogy and module, uh, preparing a module on the how we can teach kids. It's, uh, you know, heterogogy is a word, I mean, you might have learned about it. It is self-determined learning. So what is self-determined learning? When you ask a child to not go out and play, what will he say? He will say, I want to play. If you ask him to keep himself inside the doors, he will not or she will not listen to you. They will go out to play. It is in that the same way a child should say that I want to learn. I want to acquire knowledge. So if a child has self-determination towards learning, this is just pedagogy. So the theme I have taken up for this uh, CC free conference is, is technology killing creativity. It is uh, such a, a, you know, uh, bouncing topic nowadays that every parent, every teacher complains about children, that children are using technology more and they are losing their creativity. So let's see if really technology is killing the uh, creativity of children or, or is it killing us? So let's see the PPT, if I can see my PPT. Yeah, okay. It's so small over here. And let me just see in my mobile also. Okay. So is the technology killing the creativity of children? Yeah, Vijaya, if you need the presentation more, so just click on that window, you will find feel uh, you will find the full screen of the presentation. You just oh, thank you. Yes, exactly. Click on the same window where you can see the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Other presenters, okay, presenters, we can see it very well. Thank you. Okay. So what would be the poll if we ask someone or anyone in the world? What will they say? They will say the poll would be, as you can see, it's 90% yes and 10% no. So uh, I would really like to ask you participants and uh, the participants, I mean, uh, the audience who are watching this uh, live, that is it really killing creativity. So let's see. After next slide, please. OK. Is technology a boon or a bane? So what I have been practicing for the past eight years is hutagogy. There, the child has to come and he has to say, I want to learn. I want to do this. I want to do that. And if he says, if the child says, I want only to watch digital classroom, nothing else. I want to have a tablet in my uh, hand and I want to only to use it. What should I say? This is hutagogy. And I, I you know, the child should be determined. So what should I do that uh, a child always says, I want to do? So doing it on the gadget or doing it in manual work, psychomotor activities. It entirely depends on how a teacher is or how a parent is, how we deal with the children. It's entirely, uh, depend it entirely depends on the teacher or the parent. So is it a boon or a bane? Heterology trusts in acquiring knowledge and it trusts in using technology for education. And uh, let me tell you how Heterology works in my classroom. It has four sessions and in all the four sessions, the first, four, first session would be correlation, where in one session, I would be doing activities for all the six subjects taught in the school. All the six subjects at a throw in one session. So it would be manual with psychomotor activities and all the drawing, creative expression, 
uh, storytelling, it, all these would be including in that correlation. And then it comes manual work. The second session would be manual work where the child does all the manual work. What he designs, I mean, she designs or what the uh, teacher gives. And then the third session would be digital classroom. The digital is every day it's compulsory for a heterogogy class. When digital classroom and digital lessons are compulsory every day and in a sequence. So the, the fourth session and the third session, when it comes to digital classroom, what children do is like they watch the correlation part in action, in videos, in images. And if they have played a drama, then the prayer of, uh, I mean, former day, then they would be, the drama would be played in the digital class. So they would be watching themselves on the screen. And the fourth session would be games, SUPW, or drama playing, or library period. So there is a sequence of the uh, hitagogy in my classroom. So what I taught is, when I have seen children, they are taking mobiles. They, they are so much fascinated towards video games and all. We are, we are all, uh, you know, very much, uh, we know about it how children do i mean when such a thing happens and gadgets are so overwhelming on them what should we do we should do like we should change their perspective towards doing activities doing more of experimentation more of things more of psychomotor activities and when they do such things they are not much driven towards the uh, technology and for me to say technology is always information is always it gives us it, uh, it gives us information knowledge and all it is not a bane for me it is a boon so hutagogy for primary school children takes the help of digital classroom to enhance the self-determined learning skills in children so if it is mandatory i can't take it out next slide please Yeah, so we always say you have a sword in your hand, you can kill it, you can uh, use it to kill someone or you can use it for an operation to save a patient. The same is the thing with technology. And it is technology is a boon if we use it properly in a constructive way. It is a bane if we misuse it. For me and all the, all the teachers who use digital classroom, we are very much aware that it aids as a resource, it aids as a root map, and it aids as a reservoir of knowledge. Next slide, please. So then why is technology blamed always? Even we use a lot of technology. We use WhatsApp, we use Facebook, we use all lot of social networking. And uh, this is how actually we propagate. I mean, my hutagogy or my classroom, my activities are propagated through Facebook page, hutagogy page. So all people come to know about it only through technology. So why is technology blamed? It is not the technology that kills the creativity. It is the addiction for technology that is killing the creativity. I hope you agree with me. Whenever we have something and we get addicted to it, the addiction should be blamed not the resource. So we are, as parents and as teachers also, we are blaming technology and we are not blaming the addiction part of it. Addiction is weakness of the human being. It can be of anything. Technology is very much handy. You can have it in your hand. So we blame it. Next slide, please. So how did we manage in Hutagogy in my classroom? For the past eight years, I have been using my laptop. First, when it was uh, eight years back, I purchased a laptop, saving my, you know, a single rupee, rupee. I saved them and I just wanted a digital classroom in my class. It was a, a government school, an Indian government school, a public school where not all infrastructure is provided at that time. Now it's very good. 
so at that time i purchased a laptop i started experimenting how technology can be used in teaching and how children can learn by themselves not just me pushing them so uh, after that then i got a digital classroom this is my digital classroom where children learn with digital uh, you know aids and all every day digital classroom is mandatory it, it is one part of the education so what we did is like the second third session is meant for a digital classroom right so then after the digital classroom they they can perform in the fourth session how is it after the digital uh, technology is used then they perform dramas they tell storytelling they do uh, psychomotor activities they do drawing whatever they want so whatever is learned in technology or have seen they have seen with their eyes so they do it manually next slide please so the sequential learning style i have already uh, told this uh, told about this children do the correlation activity first then they go for the manual work third comes the digital activity fourth comes the games library socially useful productive work drama drawing whatever nothing can outfit the other all the four are done in a sequential style so in this sequential style they get adapted to the style of education and they they very well know after correlation teacher give me the notes i want to write give me the worksheet i want to write so at, at that i want to draw manual work after the correlation activity they know they have to do the correlation manual activity and then when it comes to digital activity they are very much overwhelmed they learn very uh, they learn very interestingly and then after that they do the psychomotor activities and all the uh, games drawing etc so when they know that they can do all these things and digital is just a part of education they get accustomed to the sequential style next slide please so technology and creativity they should go hand in hand pedagogy trust the acquisition of skills through doing pedagogy arose from the work of stewart hayes and chris kenyon uh, someone is from uh, jenny you are from australia and uh, yeah uh, stewart hayes is from australia he is a uh he is the founder of yotagaji the third gaji and he is uh, very much happy that i am uh, practicing this in primary school children and now he is ready to uh, you know aid me with the module writing and it is really a luck that i have the founder of the uh, gaji working with me on work, writing a module and um, you really hats off to australia and uh, it increases their overall learning capabilities by becoming highly autonomous and self determined and in this sequence they are accustomed they are habituated we can say they they become highly autonomous they do what they want and they know what to do and when to do how to do and they become self determined next slide please so what we can do uh so that children get minimalized use of uh, technology you know self concept let children learn how to maintain a self concept and how to manage activities let children speak on their weaknesses about using technology i have my son also and he he has been using technology for the past uh, 10 years we have a system we have gadgets and uh, he he what he uses is like one hour okay fine 15 minutes okay fine so we can, we should give, we should teach them how to have a self concept and if they have that self concept they will refrain from using maximum of the technology and let them speak about their weaknesses we know that children when they take a gadget in their hand what they do is they don't know the time they keep on doing uh, you know playing video active video games and all these things and uh, after some time if we ignore them it will be one hour two hours three hours whatever the time be so if and after such an activity if you ask a child 
Is it a weakness or is it a strength? What did you lose after using such uh, for such a long time? You have been using the gadget. So what is it that you you lost? Then when they speak about the weakness, they will know how to refrain from it. So let them find ways to refrain from misuse of technology. Next slide, please. So readiness to learn. You can see that in the first slide, the children are having a lotus leaf where it has water in it. It was an experiment. How we use it like, you know, an, a doctor, a, an apple a day keeps the doctor up. We What we do is an activity a day, an experiment a day keeps our, uh, you know, creativity alive. So our laziness away. It's like this. So it, this was an experiment. And then uh, the second slide, second one picture, you can see that it is Raspberry Pi 2. It is a connective box where we can create the website of our own classroom. So we use the latest technology. It was actually gifted by my mentor, Devneni Madhusudan sir, uh, for the uh, kids. And we, I hope we are going to use the new technology in my digital classroom this academic year. And you can see that children are doing a lot of activities. Next slide, please. They should be ready to learn and they should be ready to do the activities. The doing part should be given more importance. And then the creativity will, will automatically enhance. Because every child is unique and every child has a lot of creativity in them. Now comes the pivotal point. What I do in my experimentation is like, club technology with creativity. Let the children use technology to do creative works. My students prepare own PPTs and images in the computer. Don't you think it is not, uh, it is creativity? I think it is creativity. When they prepare their own images, when they click the photographs, when they take videos of their drama, and they say, when I wear something special, they say, teacher, I want to click your photograph. When they, when they have a birthday, they say, I want to, uh, come on, you just blow the candles on the cake and I want to take a video of it. When they use it in the digital classroom, they see in the big screen their celebrations. They are very much happy about it. It is all technology and it is all creativity. Let the children use technology to do creative activities. My students learn through the digital classroom and they use my mobile for references. My mobile, this mobile is always with my kids. It is with my kids and when they got to do something, they have to draw a drawing and they, they want a theme for references and all. They take the Google if it is with class five students. Now class one students, they can't do it, but they learn. So then they do activities, creative activities like playing dramas and skits, drawing images, giving speeches, storytelling, playing indoor and outdoor games, etc. Whatever. Let them do whatever they wish, but in a sequential manner. And let them get habituated towards it. Next slide, please. And this is, uh, you know, the first one we know. Uh, you are talking about creative pedagogies. The first one is pedagogy. And the second one is andragogy, where one-to-one uh, -one interaction takes place. And the third bogey is the pedagogy. Here we see that in pedagogy, engagement, we engage children with activities. And in andragogy, there is cultivation. And the third level of learning is pedagogy, where there is realization, when there, where there is self-determination and self-discipline. Next slide, please. So wherever we go, the creativity, the technology, everything go hand in hand. And the creativity of children is increased by the activities we give them. Like Jane said, um, Jenny said about, you know, storytelling. Uh, and uh, uh, Kulud, you told about open-ended questions. I use it uh, very much in my classroom where a drama is played. And I say, if you were the lion, in that place, what would you do? And they'll just start imagining about a, a news movie, like, you know, they'll feel like they are the lion. And uh, when I ask about, 
if you were the thief what would you have done if you are the police what would you have done so the open ended questions are always so uh, advantageous in the teaching learning process and how hypnagogy makes it easy learners aren't always highly autonomous and self directed at first as i say that it is the class 1 i am dealing now when they come after the four months training of hypnagogy however as learners progress and mature in skill and in life so their approach to learning is enhanced which is why you see hypnagogy as the topmost level of autonomy in education next slide please so this is the best part where uh, i have uh, told you uh, in the you know a few minutes back that ask them about their weakness is it a weakness or strength to use the technology like this for the long time so self assessment i practice self assessment in every class i teach when they do something when they do an activity they are given the pen red pen is given to them and i ask them to assess themselves will they will they give one star to their uh, activity or will they give three stars three stars is the highest so let them assess their activities and creativity this enhances the balance of using technology and this is one method i use next slide please so flexibility if you are so rigid in education let them sit in one side in a chair and you keep on teaching them it's just so boring even we can't sit like that for one minute uh two minutes and then we start looking this way or that way and what about small kids so flexibility this level of flexibility gives learners greater control over when they learn and empowers them to learn when they have the most mental capacity and best mind frame to do so as a result you create autonomous adult learners and a learning environment where hypnagogy can thrive and hypnagogy can improve human resource the best resource in the world is human resource as far as uh, i my opinion is concerned uh, whatever you do let the technology flourish whatever it comes from the human being so the best resource is the human being next slide please so enable collaboration encourage discussion this encourages broader view of understanding you can see in this photograph that uh, how two children from class by last academic year they won solar lamps uh, this was you know given by a donor uh, who is my who is one of the mentor also for the school and why he presented them solar lamps they did an eco project and they won the solar lamps because we are using lot of electricity where electricity is uh, becoming less in our, in uh, the part many parts of the world so if we use solar energy it's so useful you are minimizing the use of hydel electricity and all whatever the other electricities we use and these both kids now they use solar lamps to study in their homes so it is how uh, and uh, uh, here you can see that they have displayed all whatever they have prepared in their creative activities their uh, learning materials so it is it not creativity so it the all these things were learned from the technology in the third session with the digital classroom next slide please see this activity here they do the correlation activity all of them together they draw the concept of the lesson on the blackboard they put all the toys together they weave a story and see what the child is doing in the slide he is using his thumb to make impressions and with the thumb he presses the thumb on in a color he puts them on the paper and then he uh, draws something out of it so this is the best part of creativity next slide please so provide good opportunities for every child every child is unique there is no slow learner there is no uh, speed learner every child is unique so provide better op opportunities for every child so hypnagogy or self determined learning redefines how we understand learning and provides 
some exciting opportunities for educators. It is a novel approach to educational practice drawing on familiar concepts such as constructivism, capability, andragogy, and complexity theory. Pedagogy is also supported by the substantial and growing body of neuroscience research. Self-determined learning explores how pedagogy was derived and what this approach to learning involves. So this is all about the flexibility, how assessment, how e-learning can be, how e-learning can enhance or enhance on the reflective learning of the child. So action learning, research, all these things come under the pedagogy activities. And for me, when pedagogy is practiced for primary school children, I have experienced that their creativity enhanced and enhanced every day. Every day they create their creativity enhanced. Next slide, please. So this is what is pedagogy. Next slide, please. So then now comes the thing. We are talking about the theme uh, is technology killing creativity. And if creativity, you can see on the slide that if you don't use it, you lose it. And the first one, creativity, the full uh, word is given. And you can see that for every human being, all the letters were decreasing. So it's not about letters, but it's about our activity. So if you encourage children to do a lot of activities that give them immense pleasure and including playing games into it, then technology is just another resource of information for them and they can use it for better things. Next slide, please. Any questions? I'll be answering the questions later. Next one. Thank you. This is Vijay Bhanu Kote from India, and my school name is MP, MPUP School, Kehichwada, Paikaropeta, in Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh, India. Thanks a lot for listening to me, and I'm very much overwhelmed to listen to all the other speakers as well. Thank you. Thank you, Hera Manshi. Uh, I would like to thank Vijay Bhanu Kote for for her inspiring talk on the use of ICT in education. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And uh, we will have one more presentation uh, from Rin, University of Silpakorn in Thailand. And uh, she is uh, doing her research on integrating education with uh, technology. So I think we will get more insights and then we are going to have a discussion on these two presentations. So, Rin, please feel welcome. Hi, everyone. This is Rin Chip Aranai. I'm a lecturer at the Faculty of Education from Silicon University from Thailand. And I've been working with young learners who learn English as a foreign language, as well as college students who will graduate and teach English at school. And the topic for today that I would like to talk about it with you all is about designing lessons that integrate it with technology to motivate secondary students to learn English in a creative way. So for the next slide, let me start with the arguments on using technology. Uh, next slide, please, yeah. So you see that parents are kind of worried that for the young kids to use technologies nowadays, right? So the pediatrician suggested that children who are like younger than two years old shouldn't be exposed to the screen at all, while the one who are older than that should still have a limit of uh, their screen time for about two hours per day. But as you see, this is like a digital era and you see that technology nowadays has a lot of advantages, right? We use it with a wide variety of ways of purposes, such as for work, for school, for entertainment, for our own personal life purposes. So there are lots of advantages. And in my field of English language teaching and learning, we should be able to use this advantage 
uh, to the language classroom. So Cunningham in 1998 suggests that you can use, you know, technology has brought the outside world into the classroom, such as the use of films or videos. So it has a major assistance to the field very much. For the next slide, I show you the, the graph shows the population who used the internet. Right, and you see the red line. This is classified by age group. And the red line is the age of teenagers who are the age range between 15 to 24 years old. You see, they are the main groups who use the technology mostly from about 40% up to almost 60%. For the next slide, it's the graph that classify by the activities. So what did they do with those time? They mostly, more than 50% that use the technology for searching products and service, they play games, they download games, they read uh, magazines, and they read some news, downloading those films, songs or pictures, and some emailing activities. And the next slide will present you the average time that teenager in Asia they spent on playing games online. And you see teenagers in Thailand spend almost 60% of the times on playing games online. Right. So for this project, when you see the next slide that I put the two main expected outcomes for this project. Number one is to investigate what kind of technology that we can apply into English language classroom for secondary school, uh, secondary students. And number two is for the student teachers who can design applicable technology to motivate uh, those secondary students to learn English in a meaningful and creative way. Next, the settings includes the 37. Um, if you, I just like, I'm just gonna tell you the settings that 37 students, teachers, there will be 27 of them are female and 10 of them are male. The age range between 19 to 22 years old. And they were studying English in English major on the fourth year at the Faculty of Education. So uh, this project is mainly aimed to prepare them before they go to teach at the school. Uh, did we miss uh, i guess i guess she 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 has lost the connection i guess she will join back uh, sorry for this interruption uh, i request everybody to just hold on for a few minutes uh, till rin comes back to the chat window Hello, Rin. You are back now. Hello. Hi. 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 Okay. Okay. So, so we lost you, but but now you are back. It's great. So please continue. I guess you can see the slides, and please continue. Right. For the next slide, you can move on. Then 
you see the other way that they put design thinking as a methodology to provide solution-based approach to solving problems that are extremely useful in tackling co complex problems that are ill-defined or unknown. By understanding the human's needs involved and reframing problems in human-centric ways, by creating many ideas and brainstorming sessions, and by adopting the hands-on approach in prototyping and testing. So understanding these five stages of design thinking will empower anyone to apply design thinking methods to, in order to solve complex problems that occur around us in our companies, in our countries, and in our planets. Uh, next slide will show you five stages that we talk about how to do design thinking. And I have applied these five thinking, uh, five stages into the project. The first one is called empathize. So this stage, okay, let's see, this process, you try to get the information, try to understand what problem is, and the defined process is how you define the challenges or the pain points or the problems that you want to tackle. The next process is called ideate, when you share ideas, you brainstorm, get the ideas and prioritize them. And next one is the, the key main important um, process as the prototype, when you do when you do the mock-ups or the storyboards, and then you test it, see how it works. Right? The next slide will tell you, like, in order to achieve those two main uh, expected outcomes, then I have divided into. Can you go to the next one, please? Yeah, thank you. So phase. I, I've divided into two phases to achieve the first expected outcomes. The first one, first phase is define ideate, and phase two is ideate. To do phase one, the next slide will show you the process of define and ideate. So the expert in the field of technology for English language learning and teaching was invited to give a workshop to the student teachers in order to seek understanding of how to apply technology in DLT and also try to discuss how to put theories into practice. As you notice that there are lots of technology or applications that <clears throat> are introduced and have been used for like, there are a lot of them. And what should be the ones that we can use in an English language teaching and learning? So the expert in the the guest speaker in our workshop suggested some ideas such as those QR codes, Socrative quizzes, Padlet, Kahoot has been introduced for a while, Quiver, the augmented reality, Plickers, and a zip grade. That's how to do how to do the assessment. That technology really helps uh, how to do assessment for um, English language teaching and learning. The next step. On the next slide, phase two, it's the ID8. So after we got the workshop with the expert, then the student teachers or pre-service teacher were grouped. They need to brain brainstorm by themselves. They gather information from their resources and then discuss to prioritize what ideas they got. After that, they share their own, like what they want to do next step. And this took about two hour session. And after that, I gather the ideas and group them into several kinds of technology that they can use, that they have presented, you know, um, into four categories. The first kind of technology that are useful for teachers as a teacher tools that we can see, such as using English.com, English ESL, Party, LAN, Emails, Prezi, that will help teachers to do um, different. Tune is another technology that give uh, that have lets uh, teachers create video clips. Another kinds of technology that can be used in the classroom activities, such as Storybird, that will help in enhance writing skills. Educa play. Garden 
use it outside of the classroom, such as HiNative, Lingby, Bilingual app. Those applications are very useful for learners. As you notice, like in our age, in the old time previous era, <clears throat> when the technology was not really widely used like this, we barely had a chance or opportunities, especially in Thailand, to talk or to have a conversation, to practice our English language with foreign, with real foreigners. But with this technologies, uh, our students have more chance to meet with native speaker of English directly at their own time and at their own pace. It's not only just for English language learning only, like if you want to, let's say, if you want to learn Chinese language, so you go to that application and you can meet the native of the native speakers of Chinese. You can talk to them, you can practice your Chinese language with them or Thai language, for example. So those tools are very creative and you know that can create more creative ideas further. Another kinds of technology is called learning management system or LMS. And this system is like uh, the place for teachers and students who can come and learn control or manage their own learning and these systems are open for free for some um, level such as class dojo class box so creative and nearpod the next page will show you the next two phases in order to achieve the expected outcomes that for students to design their applicable technology in order to motivate those secondary students to learn English in a meaningful and creative ways. Phase three, it's a prototype and phase four is the test. So next, phase three, you see prototypes is where the student teachers needs to design the lesson plan and they produce the materials that have technology applied into the materials in order to motivate the learners <clears throat> right these activities were out of classroom learning which uh, they can use their own time they brainstorm with their own with their peers and come up with their ideas next one i give them i show them some suggested formats how to scope down their ideas so basically we start from theme which I give them the broad theme about environment to work around with and the numbers of students that we uh, assume for 30 students. The scope of content, I asked them to get the content to integrate between content and cognition or some content that connect to the culture. And learning objective, they can design their own, and they also determine what the language focus and gram like such as the grammar or vocabulary by themselves to correspond with the set objectives. The next one, then the last phase after they produce materials and lesson plan already, then they present and try out the plan activities with technologies with the groups and after that they did some reflection as a peer and self-assessment so the next one i got some cities that the student teachers design these are like their work right the student teachers work how they apply technologies to show you like as an example um just for the same theme natural uh, environment this group uh presented about natural disaster as you see the pictures of natural disaster they got the pictures from the news around the world so they got pictures of the natural disaster from thailand from america from other places around the world to discuss then they use the what if key, which is the thinker kind of strategies. It, it's like the tools to teach thinking skills. One of them is called what if, like what 
uh, Kulut has mentioned before. So they got a question here. What if you were a superhero? How would you save the environment? There could be lots of creative ideas. Uh, no creative, no idea is bad idea, right? So everyone, every student are welcome to brainstorm as many um, ideas as possible. So it must be quantitative over qualitative at this stage. After that, they apply the use of QR code to show more pictures for the students to brainstorm. Then they use another application that they use is called Linuit. Linuit is like a um, discussion board for the students. Everyone can go to the Linuit, uh, Linuit to share their idea. It looks like a post-it, right? So they share idea and they also can see their friend's idea as well. The next one is another, the next slide will show you another example. This group, they talked about extinct animals. Actually, this girl was not in the group, but I like her idea how to put QR codes. Normally, we present QR code by using PowerPoint slides or using it on the poster. But this girl, she put the QR code on the cubic and they, she could go further activities, like more creative activities, like play activities after around with that QR code on the cubic things. But come back to the activities, like the same ideas that this group present the QR code. What's behind the QR code was that after you scan the QR code, then it links to the pictures of extinct animals. In the same time, the group has a picture of habitats of the extinct animals. Then the group discuss what they see on the QR code, what, what are those extinct animals, and they predict or they brainstorm about what the possibilities of the habitat that those extinct animals could live in at the old time, right? So we got discussion over here, brainstorm. And after that, you see the post-it that they guess. Now they use the language structure to guess, to predict, to see the, what possibilities, what are the possible um, accommodation, or the habitats of those extinct animals. The next slide will show you further activities that they did. So they did hologram. It was the first time that I saw a hologram. It was like kind of excited, right? This one can motivate the students very much as you see the pictures of the student came close to see what came out from the laptop. It was it looked like a kind of tigers that was extinct, right? And then it grabs their attention. It elicits background knowledge. It shows the three-dimensional extinct animals. For the next activities, this group can use QR code and Google Form. It looked easy, it looked simple. Right. So teachers in this generation can certainly generate QR code and then that linked to the Google form. But the Google form, it doesn't look like a boring survey because you can adapt and you can put several things like pictures and other ideas into the Google form. And then after that, you get you get a statistics from the survey directly. It's the advantage of the Google form. The next one is another example, which is which they use the thinker tool, so-called what if thinker key as well. This group, she used Padlet, right? Padlet is another kind of discussion board. It's the same as like post it where you share ideas over there. So first of all, they use QR code scan after the QR code, then the learners will see the video clips about water. Then they discuss, write it down on the Padlet, and then they discuss, they discuss ideas. For the next slide, 
for the next slide. Yeah, it's like um, analysis from these activities from these projects that I've worked with my students. <clears throat> I can see that most of them use QR code very often. Like almost all groups project, they use QR code probably because you know QR code is like a secret kind of materials where the students were engaged, they were motivated, they were excited to see what's behind the code, which is the nature of learners to be motivated, not, not like a boring classroom anymore. So in a QR code, they show pictures, words, or text, and then you know teachers can adapt the QR code into matching activities or showing reading passage or discuss those grammatical structures. Another groups of um, technology that can be used in the classroom are those such as real-time board, Padlet, Today's Meet, or Lean on, Lean know it. These um, applications of this technology allow students to brainstorm idea, discuss ideas, and write, you know, some captions after the pictures. Another groups of activities that can use can be applied in order to motivate students are such as Socrative quizzes, you know, Kahoot or Quizless, because these are the programs that that is the quiz or a competitive games, which it refers, if you remember the statistics, teenagers like to download, to spend time on technology, to download games, to play games, to do competitive activities, right? So, you know, in order, like, first of all, we can see that one application can be used for several purposes. So teachers can be creative on how to adapt it. And the second one, you see several application can have, they have some same concept with the similar platform. The teacher has a lot of rooms to choose to use them interchangeably. And thirdly, as you see, for one activities, it seems to be better that we apply more than one application together so they can connect for the next for the first first activity to the next activities and learners can show can can be scaffold to practice different skills. Last but not least, as I see, very important reason to integrate technology as a part to motivate learner is that using the technology in the classroom can be a model for the learners to use by themselves in their own time. Technology that is used by the teacher can tell them this is like a signal for the learners that not only that technology can be used to play games in their own time, but it can be used to learn the language in a meaningful way in their own time and pace as well. So, and this is all the projects that I've worked with my students that would like to share with you guys. These are different references. Thank you for your attention. Any questions are welcome. Uh, thank you, Lin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jaya and Lin, both of you. Your, if I just uh, may summarize in a few words, your both presentations uh, uh, dealt have dealt with the very sensitive topic of ICT use and education. And uh, of course, people may have different opinions, but I think the uh, the main point you try to emphasize in your presentations is that if uh, uh, ICT is used uh, as an educational tool, that is only for the best of the learning process. So I think that everybody would agree on that. And uh, another use of ICT is uh, not only for uh, uh, for creating the content for educational activities, but also for uh, something we would, would call pedagogical documentation. So uh, the learners themselves could, uh, uh, as uh, 
uh, as Vijaya gave an example, the learners themselves could, for example, make a video of the performance or uh, otherwise use technology for uh, documenting the activity. So that would also promote uh, their self-assessment. So that is another application of ICT, which I think is very important and very useful. And uh, uh, thank you once again. And maybe if we have any questions on your presentations, yeah. So uh, we have a question for uh, for Vijay. Uh, the question is like, uh, do you think it takes more planning and efforts to design uh, the pedagogy classroom for for a teacher? So do you think that uh, that is something that just gives uh, extra work for the teacher? or it might be something that actually helps teacher in their work. Can you please repeat the question? So the question is, uh, do you think that use of uh, technology and uh, just like overall the design of uh, uh, Hitogaji classroom is uh, more uh, effort for a teacher? It's not, so, you know, uh... What a teacher should be is like, first of all, every human being has creativity. And focus on the creative part of the teacher. If you are a teacher, focus on your creativity and then think about how you can develop a heterogenic classroom. So if you want to develop a classroom that implies heterogeny, it's not about the efforts, but it's about the creativity it's about the spontaneity, how we can create a heterogeneous classroom. And if you'd like to know about the how to create a heterogeneous classroom, you can please visit my classroom or just I can send a video of the classroom if you'd like to. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me rephrase the question so that it will yeah. help, you to, help you to answer. Because yeah. you have practical examples and practical working uh, models of, of how the you talk about the Hoji classroom works and yeah. maybe 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 it's a few years back uh, you were not having it so yeah. uh, do you think that you have increased workload because these are the questions which are being asked by most of the teachers before adopting new practices these are very practical questions so i guess you can motivate yeah. others by giving your point of view and does it help in long run to manage the classrooms by the students on, on themselves. That's the question. Yes. You are, thanks for the clarity, Hiramji. So actually, when you develop a heterogeneous classroom, you are so satisfied with it because all the, the classroom, uh, the representation of the classroom is activity based. The images of the classroom, the digital classroom, the material you use. It is all effortless and it is all uh, what I would say is only the digital equipment would be uh, the cost you have to bear. And nowadays uh, the government is providing wherever in the, the, the government is providing digital classroom all over the, you know, the state. So it is not about the cost or it is not about the effort. It is about how we create and using the material when it comes to using the material in the classroom. What I use, like, I use low cost, no cost, and all reuse, reduce, uh, recycled items. So I don't have to purchase anything more. But just on the technology part of it, we have to have some monetary funding. Like, if you have a printer, a digital classroom, a projector, a screen, a laptop, your mouse, and all these things, you have to have this equipment. And uh, at times, you have to, uh, you know, spend some money on uh, repairs. If the current gets, you you know, if the connections get loose or if something goes wrong, you have to invest on it. And for that also, you we can uh, put uh, the funds into a monetary funding uh, unit or the government can provide if it is a public school. So it is about the material. If we use, reuse, reduce and recycled items for the classroom activities and in, in this sense, 
the creativity of the children will increase and as well as the creativity of the teacher also increases thank, thank you. you thank you i guess you answered my uh, question perfect yeah, yeah yeah i hope so yes yes, yes. Mm. thank you uh, another question we have got here uh, how do you involve parents in school activities on a regular basis uh, i think it's is this the question more for Vijaya? Yes. Uh, yeah, once again. So how, how do you involve parents in school activities on a regular basis? So parents? Parents, yeah, the, the, the families. How do you involve them in, uh, in activities, in educational activities? or? Yeah, yeah. Haranji, is it parents, right? Yes, yes. So, so practically, uh, how do you how do you involve the parents? Uh, because the parents' demands are different, and uh, what you want to do is different in most of the cases. I guess yeah. you, had, you had to face so, that. Please explain, explain about it. Yes. Thanks for the question. This is a very important question because uh, not only in India, in many other countries, parents are more inclined towards corporate schooling. And uh, these corporate schooling, it's not quite different from other schooling or, or the other concepts. But you know, the material provided or the activities taken up are different. Most of them are mugged up, actually. Uh, so in this uh, type of uh, method I use, pedagogy, there what happens is like children are trained for one month in drawing, four months in pedagogy. And in the other six months or five months, what they learn is they learn to do their activities on their own. They do what they want. They can plan what they want. Teacher, today I have brought a flower. I want to dissect it today. So if my plan is to teach them uh, animals and if they bring flowers, I have to transform, you know, my I have to change the plan of the lesson, how they learn. So in this way, if the children are trained, the first thing is um, how parents react to it. So what I do is, uh, if there are any teachers listening to me, please listen to me very carefully. What I do is like every month I conduct parents meeting and parents come to my classroom. They first of all, they learn what is happening in the class. They first see the classroom and they get fascinated because the classroom is so beautiful. It is activity oriented, playway method is going on and they know the knowledge how the, their children are acquiring. And then in the parents meeting, I re bring the children and children, uh, they uh, what they do is like they perform what they have learned and they show their notebooks, they show their activities, they show their experiments. The first meeting goes like this or the second meeting goes like this. And from the third meeting, what I do is I invite parents into my classroom. In one of the pictures, you might have seen in a PPT, this one woman is drawing in the, on the blackboard with all the, all the children standing behind her. It is one parent named Jyoti. And uh, she is the parent of class 5 student Pradeep. She came to me and I said, come on, prepare a fruit salad. That was healthy food day. So what she did was she prepared fruit salad for all the kids and they were eating. And she I asked her, come on, can you tell the benefits of fruit salad? She happily told the children how, how fruits benefit them. And then again, I invite each and every parent one day or the other day. I ask them to teach them, ask them to sit with the children when they learn. When I teach correlation, till parents are like, they will be seeing like this. What is this happening? Because all the toys are displayed. It is not about lesson or anything. Small, small toys, animals, birds, um, you know, alphabets, numbers, all these are toys. We display them in a, uh, in a concept and we teach a story. So when it, if something goes on like this and uh, few children draw something on the board in correlation activity, parents first of all think that there's something very much what is this? Uh, what is going on here? And when they concentrate, focus on what is happening and how the output of the children, 
how they flourish, how they progress, the development. Then they come to know that their children are learning themselves. Over a period of time, it is initially, hetagogy is very, very slow. I would like to mention it again and again. Initially, if you have to train a child to walk, you know how a child walks. You know how a child learns to speak. You need to teach them many times. You need the child have to imitate you. The child sees you, how you speak, and then he learns. In the same way, initial stages of yotagogy, you need five or six months to train the students. And after that, let me tell you, if the same batch goes for a period of five years in a yotagogy classroom, I can bet that they can challenge class 10 students. They can challenge any, uh, you know, creative uh, people because they write stories on their own. They write notes on their own. They do things on their own. And when, they, when the children are accustomed and habituated to do things, to learn on their own, what would you expect from them? Do you need IIT coaching centers? Do you need <laughs> MSET coaching centers? I don't think so. And if Yotagogy progresses well in any country, all these things will, you know, diminish. Thank you. Uh, Elena, can I ask one question for Rich? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, so thanks, Vijay, for the uh, elaborate answer. Uh, Rin, I have a question for you. Uh, uh, here in this case, uh, uh, you have created a platform or let's say an experience where the more than 32 students, am I right? 32 or 37 students were there yes. and, and uh, which is which is sizably quite a uh, good number of students in a class, uh, not like 20 or something. So do you think that engaging those students uh, with the help of technology at that age was more easier for you as compared to giving them ready-made task that's my question number one and second thing when you use the design thinking model uh, do you think that uh, it creates it creates uh, and challenge for the students uh, to ideate um, on a different level as compared to the using maybe simple DODC model or some other models. What is your perspective on that? Um, right. Thanks for the questions. Like with the 37 students that I try to engage them with the ICT, it's, it was kind of challenging in a way because, well, let's say I got inspired by the last conference that I came that I went with the CCE conference, basically. So I came back and I've changed my ideas how to do the project. I started with asking them what they wanted to do. So it is said that they wanted to learn more about technology, how to apply technology into the classroom in order to prepare them to be a teacher, a student teachers in the school, right? So I didn't know, I didn't have like the steps first until I went back to see design thinking. I, I just want the classroom to be more creative. It, when you tackle problems, it can be as easy as just fix the problems what it is. Or you can twist it around, play with it, look at the situation and context, what is possible, what can be creative, what can be fun and engage students more. So that's another, it's like a challenge for them. When we think of how to use technology, it can be just direct technology just to answer a particular question, right? And so we started off from that by the students' needs. They want to do technology. We use, we, we came up with the ideas of technologies by using design thinking, right? And the question asking about 37 students, is it easy 
was it easy to engage them with ICT? I would say that I thought it was challenging and would be difficult to execute in terms of state uh, processes. But however, with the digital natives, they have been familiar with ICT or technology more than I have expected. So in a challenging way, there was some kind of easier to understand. They were engaging, they had, um, I, I would say that they like a little bit of challenge to find technology on their own and they present it to their friends. And it was like a, an accomplish for them how they can put technology into the classroom. And the design thinking model was very useful because it can, you know, when you have creative ideas, it was to, it, it could be a lot, a lot of ideas. But design thinking helped not only to scope down, but hope, help to think systematically how to create problem solutions systematically from the first step until you have prototype it and then you test your ideas if it is going to be creative or not. So that's like, um, I think it's a good, good processes for, for students to do um, creative thinking. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks for the perfect, uh, I guess it was, it was, that's what I was looking for. Thanks. Elena, back thank to you. you. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for your comment. Yeah. Uh, uh, if we have any more questions, I don't know if it... uh, Maybe at this point, I could ask you to share your experiences and your thoughts about your work with the PC. Maybe something about the conference you attended last year, or maybe otherwise about your current projects. So please. That would be very interesting to hear your perspectives. Yeah, is it for me? I think it's for everyone, but if you would like to start, yes, you're welcome, please. Yeah, okay. So it was actually, thanks, uh, a great experience visiting Finland for the CC Global Conference, I mean, you know, symposium last year in November. And uh, I was really so much, um, you know, uh, like um, worried because it was my first um, first uh, abroad travel journey. So, you know how uh, I can't express my gratitude towards Khiram ji, Shirin ma'am and uh, Danika ji <laughs> most because she has uh, supported me a lot and they, they were so supportive in every aspect. And I can give all the credit to Haram ji, Shirin ji, because I was unable to perform and uh, it was their support that with their support, I performed well, hope so, uh, in the conference. And uh, keeping it aside, what I have learned is like, I just wanted, wanted to visit Finland to see the schools. I have uh, attended a lot of conferences, symposiums. It's not about the conference, but I just wanted to see the schools in Finland, how they achieved world's best education system. How is it like? But when I visited the primary school, uh, the university and the middle school, all these schools, I have seen a lot of trend lot of uh, energy flowing in every student as well as the monitoring teachers and the infrastructure the concept of uh, having public schools public hospitals in finland is the thing that really really it, i was like uh, i was dreaming of an india like that to say <laughs> what a so i i, I just felt if 
the same thing would happen in india and all the schools were public schools all the hospitals were public schools i really appreciated when uh, ritta ji uh, she gave a presentation on the first day how finland transformed its education system in over a period of 100 years and after in 1980 or so herandi if i could remember properly when they decided to have only public schools except some concept schools in finland that was the turning point i think that finland has now reached the stage of best education system in the world it is that decision that made the difference and i really really dream that my india would be one day like that and coming to the symposium i have met a lot of friends lot of wonderful people and uh, the exhibition then you know i can't uh, i can't uh, you know keep silent without appreciating rin and uh, misan if you can rem remember rin i was so sick and you people were so supporting <laughs> i don't i would not present my paper and really misan and you were so supporting and it, it was like meeting lot of global people who are so passionate compassionate who are so loving towards each other and i really felt that there is lot of humanity boozing i mean you know oozing in the world and we say that we are so practical these days no the same way like you know technology is not killing creativity is the same way we are so compassionate and um, when i have seen the presentations when it comes to the presentations um, i have seen uh, people who presented their papers on you know one single concept of art one single concept of music one single concept of drama and how children in their uh, project in their experimentation has uh, you know beyond uh, their uh, limits they have excelled when i have seen the reports of the projects i thought all these things would be incorporated in uh, india as well even they are happening because uh, india is much into lot of cultural activities uh, traditional activities and all those experimentation is very well going on because vedic uh, mathematics vedic education is uh, the neev the root of the education system in india because it nowadays when we i thought that we can go back to ages when experimenting in education so that using technology and using the vedic thing all these when we con when we club these concepts we can bring lot of wonderful human resource into the world into the global arena because nowadays we say that it is a global citizen rather than citizen of india citizen of australia or citizen of finland because when we club all these concepts together in such great symposiums we can say that we can produce great human resource to the global arena and it was a great experience visiting finland and thanks for all the support thank you uh, thanks for all the comments actually uh, please please miss uh, please don't hold say thanks because we are a part of the same family and as you mentioned that uh, we as an organizers including me elena shraddha and all the shishirin and everyone uh, we 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 find that uh, every day by day once we get the conference coming and every iteration of the conference we get more family members for ourselves and we get more team members for ourselves and i guess you are one of them and same the rin and uh, everyone who has been really motivating us uh, during this entire process uh, uh, thanks thanks for this uh, i guess rin i guess uh, your your experience with the entire process has been also uh, quite great and same with kulut because i guess kulut 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 point was also very part when when she started um, interacting with with she, uh, with with the entire education community it has been great working with the kulut so i guess you both can share your ideas as well as points of point of views uh, please rain and kulut well for me i can put um the ideas of appreciation together because since i attended i've i've attended several conferences but it was the first time to go in to finland last year with 
the CCE conference. And the theme was about creativity in education, right? So first of all, I was very impressed by the organizing team who put us, the presenter, the participant into the creative setting. So we, France was in a university. So we walked past this several rooms in the university and we could see the setup of the creative ways of setting up the room instead of the traditional ways of setting up the classroom. I got to experience, I got to observe those students, the fin finished students who came to work in groups, how the teachers conduct some classroom, some classes in a creative way, right? So I got some good ideas on how the settings and surroundings really support and encourage students' creativity. For the, for the second creative things that I got impressed was the creative presenters. Not only, um, not only the, the, the settings that we could enjoy seeing the creativity, but also the presenters that we got to listen to. They were selected from all the countries from all over the world who got different ideas different perspectives and could give us different creative ideas from around the world. Not only the presenters, but also the guest speakers from Finland themselves that can open my view for some concepts, new ideas, creative ideas that lead me to apply into my own context. So that's the creative presenters that I would put into. And the last one, another creative, one of the star activities was visiting those creative schools in Finland. So I got impression of how teachers really respect education policy, they respect each other, I can see those teacher respects the parents, they respect the students, and more importantly, those respects give a big value on learning as a whole. So not only that it creates creativity in learning, but it shows how people support each other to the overall school system. That's really, really nice pictures, like we can see the environment, how everyone cherishes and share ideas, how, how everyone wants to improve the education of Finland to be better. You know, that kind of ideas really give me pictures of uh, new pictures of education that I have seen before. Like very supportive system. The other one that I like the most is like, a um, trust system that Finland education uh, talked about it several times during the symposium that everyone trust trust each other and by doing by making it better and better for for the sake of learners and sake of learning uh, and make it better for the school system and after the conference, I have really changed my mindset and ways of teaching. And it has helped me for my own teaching. And it, of course, passed from my knowledge to my students in the same way to, to learn from one of the best education. Thank you. Thank you, Hiram, Shirin, and everyone in the CCE organizing teams. You've been very kind and helpful for us. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Rin. Thanks for your encouraging words and nice comments about us. Uh, uh, I would like to ask Kudud if she wants to add something. Uh, yes, Kudud. 
uh, of course, uh, my amazing experience in CCE uh, was really uh, uh, fortunate. Um, I was amazed and assumed by the creativity in, uh, among teachers uh, in Finnish school. Um, actually, I will never forget the walk on the forest, regardless of the weather. Is it freezing cold or it was snowy? They have a daily walk in the woods where they connect with nature and play with the mud. They were forming letters with the fingers. I remember asking uh, one of the teachers a question. Uh, aren't they going to be uh, looking dirty and their hands going to be a little bit muddy by doing that? Uh, she answered me the simple qu uh, answer, said, saying that um, teaching, they should have a proof on them that they were learning, not on a piece of paper. So actually, I was amazed in this uh, answer. Uh, also, um, what I was really um, amazed by is their classrooms, how it was designed in a special way, uh, especially for students that um, challenge students. They needed more attention or their class is designed for these special students who need more attention or their learning style should be a little bit different than the others. So their classes was more as a lounge than, um, than a ordinary classes. Uh, I remember seeing that students were really feeling comfortable in a class. And they were not in a real class setting. That's also one of the uh, the things that really um, amazed me. Um, uh, in general, the, uh, the educators there, the sense of trust among each other, the principal or the teacher or the co-worker, everyone there negotiated in, in a way uh, that they can have an open discussion now. Uh, between them, so the principal could hear uh, something. Uh, if he, if any teacher comes to him and have any new idea, yes, he would give him an ear and listen and see what's the change and give him his space to create and do the things that he feels it's right for his own classroom. Uh, I came back to Saudi Arabia and uh, I started to do my master thesis. Uh, actually comparative studies between the schools there and here uh, specifying instruction and in play and hopefully I'm going to submit it in August and I'm really um, enjoying this study. Uh, I really wish I could visit Finland again because I didn't have enough from Finland and meeting you people Shireen and Heram was really a blessing for me uh you had this uh, hospitality of uh, of welcoming us i remember coming with a group of eight and we were uh, people from uh, we were t from 10 different countries uh, and you we were all were treated great uh, it was a really nice experience i wish i can do that again thank you so much thanks kulu thanks a lot and uh... I thanks Elena also for conducting this session. She is still with us, but uh, in a different uh, table now. Uh, but uh, I also uh, thank you all uh, speakers, uh, Kulud, Vijaya, Rin, and Jenny. I think Jenny had to leave in between because it was already quite late in Australia. So she had to leave in between, but I thank her for joining uh, us here. And uh, it was a privilege to listen to all you uh, researchers about different perspectives on creativity, imagination, and digital technology. Uh, I think we all understood from your presentations that uh, creativity and uh, technology uh, can be uh, like they can work together and they can hold each other's hand. Uh, very powerfully in this uh, digital uh, world now because we cannot eliminate it and we should not eliminate it and at cce also we say the same thing that we like to use uh, technology for more and more collaboration and more uh, more and more acting together creatively so 
on this note i would like to also thanks our very active audience we have got audience from 14 different countries and uh, some of them have been very active in asking questions and posting their comments so i am really thankful to them because of them we could really enjoy this session this more now uh, i would like to announce something very important for our sixth symposium i think uh, many people must have already uh, got inspired after listening to you all and they must have wanted to attend they now they are uh, they must be planning to attend our upcoming symposium our sixth symposium so uh, but they might think that the deadline is approaching soon just uh, 30th of june just tomorrow so i would like to announce now that we are going to extend the deadline for abstract submission and now the new deadline will be 30th of july so i would like to request all of you who are in this call to let your colleagues and uh, fellow researchers and your doctoral students know that now we have extended the submission deadline and we will be expecting uh, at least 100 delegates for this upcoming conference so everybody is welcome to join us here and we will be happy to greet you again in june so thanks a lot again and uh, on this note uh, i would like to announce that we are at the end of this uh, pre conference online pre conference bye bye take care and be in touch thank you